Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the top 5 best gunpowder civilizations in Age of Empires 2 and we're going to hop right into it. Starting off at number 5, we've got a civilization that really thrives on its gunpowder. In fact, I would say it's one of its main units and it's definitely its main backline unit as the civilization doesn't really have any other backline DPS options besides its gunpowder at least going into the late game. And this civilization is the Burgundians. Now in general, when I look at the best gunpowder civilizations, I need to see civilizations that have both hand cannoneer and bomber cannon. Those are basically the only two land gunpowder units, there is the cannon galleon that is is kind of a gunpowder unit as well, but it's only on water and it's not going to be regarded too highly in this video. Now, in general, the Burgundians don't really have a lot of ranged options. Lacking thumb ring means that crossbow and cav archers not going to be great in the late game past that early castle age point. Skirmishers are fine, but they're lacking the last armor upgrade and they don't have thumb ring, which is a small hurt. So, you know, elite skirm are okay. So as far as backline DPS, you're only really left with hand cannoneer and bombard cannon, but that is completely fine because your gunpowder units have plus 25% attack. This puts the hand cannon here at 17 plus 4 for a whopping 21 damage, which is really insane considering how fast it is to get it out on the field. All you need to do is pick up chemistry and that's pretty much it. You just need a few armor upgrades if you want them, but other than that, the 21 attack comes built in, which is extremely solid for a backline unit in early Imperial Age. Their bomber cannons are, I believe, 40 plus 10, so they also pack in quite a big punch, and of course, they're really solid against units and buildings. Now, the thing that you have to kind of mention with Burgundians as well, and the reason why they're not high higher up on the list is simply because they're lacking siege engineers it means that their late game bomber cannon play is not going to be as top tier as you'd expect still amazing in gunpowder wars and still one of their main units but just not as oppressive going into the hyper late game it is worth noting that siege engineers is a pretty expensive technology so because siege engineers is so expensive you don't really see it being picked up in early imp fights it's usually something that dictates how the later stages of the game goes and so burgundians even though they lack it they should still be able to win in the early gunpowder fights. Moving on to number four, we've got the Portuguese. Now the Portuguese are a really strong gunpowder unit and they're one of the few civilizations that get gunpowder access in Castleage. They get this via the organ gun, which is an amazing gunpowder unit that needs very little upgrades to really get to its strongest potential. In Castleage, you don't need a single upgrade on this guy. He just comes out and is at his max potential right away. In Imperial Age, you need a few upgrades like Siege Engineers, Unique Tech, and the Elite Upgrade. But aside from that, the organ gun does really well in most combats. It does really well in low numbers as it has a high damage output, but the more units are on the field in high numbers it still does really well because of its massive inaccuracy the organ gun is actually landing a ton of shots that is basically splash damage on enemy units when you have 40 or 50 of these guys they will melt mass units from the opponents because of how much damage it does in a radius this means that enemy units engaging in mass against the organ guns will have a tough time closing the gap without losing a ton of their firepower and by the time they even close the gap half the army is gone and the organ guns can easily clean up the rest very strong units and definitely a pillar for this civilization in terms of gunpowder. However, that's not all the Portuguese get. They, of course, get all their gold units at a discount, which helps a lot in the gunpowder department. And they also get a unique tech, Archibus, in Imperial Age, which makes their gunpowder units basically benefit from ballistics. It's the only civ in the game that gets ballistics on gunpowder, and being able to use this with bombard cannons and organ guns and hand cannoneer makes for an amazing gunpowder civ overall. Definitely deserving of its number four spot. Next up at number three might be a little bit of a surprising pick because this is not something you might consider to be a gunpowder civilization. In fact, I myself would not call it a gunpowder civilization, but the game refers to it as such and for good reason. Well, it is the Hindustanis and uh, it is a civilization that gets two bonuses for their gunpowder units. Now they get the gunpowder units that have plus one armor, both pierce and melee. That's a, a civ bonus. And then they also have a unique tech, Shatagni, I think, which gives hand cannoneers plus two range. Now nine range hand cannoneer are incredibly oppressive. For those who might not realize how strong that is, that is one extra range over Arbalest and Skirmisher fully upgraded from a generic civilization. And so outranging Skirms, Crossbowmen, throwing their heavy cab archers as well, and all of a sudden the hand cannoneer, incredibly solid at 9 range, especially with that extra armor that's built in, and just then also get full upgrades. So not only do you have 9 range hand cannoneer, you have 13 range bombard cannon, meaning you're going to have some incredibly strong long range firepower. And that's, in my opinion, why I put Hindustani at number three over the Burgundians and Portuguese. Now you could make a case for them being a little higher, but I think we know what's coming and those two civs I think are just a little bit better. 
Moving on to number two, this is a bit of a debate between number two and number one. It's really obvious what civs are going to be going here. If you guys, you know, play the game, you know, remotely consistent or even just watch it here and there, you probably know about these two civs. And for number two, I decided to put the Turks here. Now, the Turks being number two is a bit of a shocker to some for sure, but I think number one just trumps them a little bit. Let's take a look at what the Turks have now. The Turks get plus 25% hit points on all their gunpowder units, putting their bomber cannons at 100 HP and giving a nice kick to their hand cannon near HP as well they also get a unique unit the janissary which is a gunpowder unit on top of the hand cannoneer it is of course coming out of the castle and has especially the elite version a lot better stats than the regular hand cannoneer so it's definitely worth toying around with their janissary if you've got the time to create it out of the castle it is the superior units in post imp of course if you cannot afford too many castles then you know just going for the generic hand cannoneer is completely fine with the turks now you also get a team bonus that is a nice kicker at the end gunpowder units are created 25 percent faster which helps at you know just getting at the numbers a little bit quicker and helping you get across the field but there is a really important tech that really pushes the turks up there and that is their unique tech artillery giving plus two range to bomber towers and bomber cannons as well as cannon galleons but not too important for this video but especially the plus two range to the bomber cannons which is absolutely huge 14 range cannons yes it outranges siege engineers and it destroys civilizations that don't even get siege engineers on their cannons so for example burgundians going up against turk cannons it's not a competition turk will absolutely wipe the floor with the Burgundian cannon because two range is huge. If you play it correctly, the Burgundians can't even fire back at your cannons. You're always going to shoot and then run back to keep that distance and fight at maximum range. Turk Bombards are insane and it's definitely deserving of its number two spot on the list and it's very arguable at number one as well if you make the right points. Before I show you guys the obvious number one, let's go ahead and talk about an honorable mention that is not so obvious, but is very interesting because I'm sure a lot of you guys don't even realize how strong this civ is. It is the Spanish. The Spanish are really good because their gunpowder units fire 18% faster, and that is incredibly solid for your hand cannoneer and your bomber cannons. But I just felt like since this was the only bonus they get, and since they also don't get siege engineers, it's a very solid bonus, but it just was a little bit shy off the top five list. So I put Spanish at number six. Six. There's no slot six on the list, so they get put into the honorable mention. Still an incredibly good gunpowder sieve and worth messing around with them, you know, just to kind of see how that feels. They also get the Conquistador, which is a really strong mounted gunpowder unit. So if you count the Conquistador in, you could make an argument for Spanish being bumped up, but I was pretty happy keeping them in the honorable mentions. Now, the Italians have both the hand cannon here and they've got the bomber cannon. And while they don't have siege engineers, they do have a very nice discount, which is gunpowder units cost minus 20%. And I think that's very solid as this boost your hand cannoneer giving them a nice little discount and it also boosts your bomber cannons giving them also a nice little discount the lack of siege engineers does hurt you in late game when you lack in that one range and that extra damage against buildings for your bomber cannons but honestly you've got full upgrades on hand cannoneer and you're definitely going to be pretty solid all right, moving on to the number one gunpowder civilization in the game. It is the Bohemians. Now, shout out to whoever guessed it and whoever couldn't quite guess it. That's all good. I'm going to explain to you why the Civ is absolutely amazing with the gunpowder stuff and why it's clearly the number one or at least you know clearly above everything but turks it's close with turks but i would give the slight edge to behemoths and the reason i do that is that they get the gunpowder as part of their main kit starting in castleage getting access to hand cannoneer is absolutely massive for any gunpowder castleage push the hand cannoneer is strong and imp if it's in castleage it beats pretty much every unit in, in the game besides like skirm crossbow with ballistics but it beats literally everything else and it's not even close on top of that they also have unique tech wagenberg tactics that lets their gunpowder units move 15 percent faster and on top of all that they get Siege Engineers with Hufnitze, which is a upgrade to the Bomber Cannon. And honestly, this upgrade carries the civilization really hard in terms of, you know, the gunpowder angle, because it's nothing too special in terms of like gunpowder without this upgrade. But this upgrade makes their cannons super insane. The splash damage on them is incredible. The hand cannoneer, especially with the faster moving buff from the Wagenberg Tactics, lets them protect the Bomber Cannons very effectively. The Bomber Cannons move slightly faster, letting you get nice angles on your opponent, letting you shoot shots that you normally wouldn't be able to hit. And letting you evade bad situations faster than other civilizations. You also have 13 range, so you're only one shy of Turks since you have Siege Engineers, but that's kind of okay because your fast movement speed lets you kind of make up for that. And honestly, the best part about it is the extra splash damage and extra raw power of the Hufnitze. I think that's in some cases better than the extra range and extra HP that the Turks get. It is very close, but for me, the Bohemians are the best gunpowder civilization in Age of Empires 2.
Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys want to check out more content from me, do consider checking me out on Twitch for the live streams. And if you want to pay for some extra content, especially guides, check out my Patreon as we've got a lot of good guides there, including a 30 minute guide on how to micro every unit in the game and a 30 minute guide on how to do the perfect boom, all of my booming secrets. Check that out if you want to. And if not, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.